world, those judgments have always, always been mixed with mercy. Except one time, only once. And what was in that cup that Jesus was struggling with whether he was going to drink it was the fullness of the wrath of God, which simply means the pure justice of God against sin. It wasn't arbitrary, it wasn't mean, it wasn't cruel, it wasn't tyrannical as some people say. It was pure justice, pure justice. And it had uh, no mixture of mercy. There was no mercy in that cup. It was totally undiluted. And in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus was wrestling with whether he was going to drink the full cup of God's justice against sin without mercy. And he agonized over that. He struggled over that. He prayed that prayer three times. He said, Father, I don't want to do this. I don't want to drink this cup because what this means is that we're going to be separated. And I don't want to do this because I love you and you love me. But if that's what it takes to save people, save Earl Myers, to save Junie and Charles, save Pastor Board, save Pastor Wahlberg, save Alan. Where'd Alan go? Alan's gone. <laughs> to save it, all of us, Jesus decided if that's what it takes to save human beings, I'm going to drink the cup. I'm going to do it. I'm going to drink the full cup of the wine of the wrath of God without, without mercy. Look at chapter 27, verse 46. This is the most powerful verse in the Bible, I think. Chapter 27, verse 46. After Jesus made the decision to drink the cup, he made the decision in Gethsemane, but he didn't fully drink that cup, not fully, not fully in Gethsemane. He drank it fully when he hung on the cross during the hours of darkness. Verse 45 says, from the sixth hour to the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. Verse 46 says, about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, and he said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It was at this moment that Christ was fully drinking the cup, and he was experiencing full and entire separation from his, from his father. And when the final moments of time hit, when that 902 moment hits, and the world's cameras are on us, and we're explaining the issues, when we're telling the world that it's the wrong day, using force, that's wrong, God's day is the seventh day, the Ten Commandments are still intact, the whole world has broken every one of them, we've broken his law, and we're guilty, people are guilty, and then we show them, but the hope is, the good news is, that the maker who gave the law came down here 2,000 years ago, walked the earth, looked like you, looked like me, two eyes, a nose, a mouth, hands, a heart, a mind, and he chose willingly, out of love, to drink the cup, to swallow it all, and to experience the full weight of the sin, to pay the full price. What I'm trying to say is that when the third angel's message is preached, we need to go to Gethsemane. We need to go to Calvary, and we need to show people what really happened there and point them to a man to a God-man crying on a cross, Eli, Eli, 
Lama, Subhakthani, why have you forsaken me? I'm going to tell a little story that uh, some of you have heard before. I, I just keep telling it. Some of you, most of you haven't. But I just keep telling it because I can't think of anything else that really, that really touches me more than this little event that happened in, in my life a number of months ago. Um, our, our little boy at that time was probably about 15 months old, maybe 16 months old. And, and at that point, uh, little Seth, he couldn't quite say daddy yet. I love it when he says daddy. <laughs> My favorite word, <laughs> daddy. He's probably asleep somewhere right now, or maybe he'd be saying daddy right now. But anyway, um, before he could say daddy, he said gagi. That was what he, 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 he just couldn't say it, so he couldn't say his D's, so he said his G's, gagi. And I always liked that. Well, it was kind of endearing to me to think my son calls me gagi. Okay, that's me. And uh, anyway, a number of months ago, I had been traveling for five days. And I'm very close with my little boy. We, I put him on my shoulders, we walk around, we take hikes together, and we just have a great time. And um, I'd been gone for five days, traveling, holding a seminar somewhere. And that was a long five days. And my wife and I, Kristen, talked on the phone on the fifth day. And she said to me, she said, Steve, uh, guess what your son did today? <laughs> and I said, what? What did he do? Is he OK? Is he fine? And she said, oh, yeah, he's fine. She said, uh, guess what he did? He, he got up in the morning. And after not seeing you, you know, for five days, he got up and he ran into your office. And he started calling out, Gagi, Gagi. And then he ran into the bedroom, calling out, Gagi, Gagi. And then he ran into, the, uh, into the one of the bathrooms, Gagi, Gagi. And then he went into the kitchen or the living room, Gagi, Gagi. Where is Gagi? And when she told me that, it pierced my heart in a way that only a dad or a parent can really understand. And I thought about, I thought about, here's my little boy, you know, running around the house after five days of me not being there. And when I see him again, he's going to look different. You know, you, your little boy's growing up and you're gone for two days and he's look, he looks different. He's bigger. They're growing so fast. And here's five days when I'm away from him, out of his life. And I just thought about that. I thought, here he is running around the house crying out, Gagi, Gagi, Gagi. And where was Gagi? Gagi wasn't there. Daddy wasn't there. Daddy wasn't there. And I made a decision at that moment. I decided I am not going to be an absentee dad very often. I'm not going to travel without my family hardly at all. We just came back from Roseburg, Oregon, gave a seminar up there, and they were with me. So I don't want to be away from my family. And then you know what happened? My mind, my mind went back to Gethsemane. And my mind went back to Calvary. And I thought about a son hanging on a cross, crying out to a father, Kagi, Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabachthani. And there was no voice from heaven, no response. Because the father, I mean, he was there, but he wasn't able to come to his son like he wanted to because his son was bearing your sin and my sin. And it separated them. It ruptured their relationship. It ruptured their unity. They did it for you and for me. Because they love us. They love us. And they want us to be with them forever. They were willing to be separated. The father was willing to be separated from his son so he could be united to you and to me. Now, I've got one more text, and then we'll go back to Revelation and finish. Go to Romans chapter 5, verse 9, and then I'll tie all this in. Romans chapter 5, verse 9. Verse 8 talks about God's love, how he demonstrated his love 
by giving his son. Verse 9, 